that are transmitted that are transmitted through sexual intercourse through sexual intercourse okay now there are certain words you must have heard of one is called sexually transmitted diseases we know that it's stds right so yes. this is a sexually transmitted diseases you also must have heard the word sti STI stands for sexually transmitted infections. Okay. okay. Yes. Then there is RTIs. These are called reproductive tract infections. Okay. Oops. Now, if you look at the word carefully, Sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections, you know, they are mostly the same thing. One is infection, one is a disease. Okay. But they they both may or may not affect the reproductive system itself. You understand? For example, HIV uh, AIDS, which is caused by the HIV. So AIDS is a STD. It is a sexually transmitted diseases, disease, right? AIDS yes. does not affect the reproductive system itself. It is transferred through reproductive system through sexual intercourse, but the symptoms of this disease, it does not cause any infection in the reproductive tract. Do you understand that? Yes. So all RTIs, all reproductive tract infections, of course, because they are happening in reproductive tract in the reproductive system, they, they are a type of sexually transmitted infections, right? Yes. All RTIs are STIs or all RTIs are STDs. They are disease of the re reproductive yeah. tract. But all STDs are not RTIs. Yes. You understand? That is clear? So can we take the example of hepatitis B? That is not in... Uh, exactly. Yeah. Hepatitis B is a sexually transmitted disease, but it is not a reproductive tract infection. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Very good. So let's talk about some diseases, um, some sexually transmitted diseases, and let's figure out what is their causat causative agent and whether they are uh, RTIs or STDs. So any anyone which you know would you like to start with? Oh, there is another term which we use. It's called VDs. They are, it's, they are uh, also known as... Venereal diseases. Yes, venereal diseases. Again, these are the diseases which are spread through the reproductive system that's why they are called so these three terms just know that what is the fine line difference or all rtis are stds but all stds are not rtis now anything you would start with for example you said hepatitis b let's start with hepatitis b so what is hepatitis said hepatitis it has two words hepat and itis the word hepat means liver. Okay. In biology. Write it down in your terminology section. So if I say hepatocytes, what does it mean? Inflammation of the liver. Something like that. Yeah. Hepatitis. Itis is inflammation. You are correct. So basically it's the, it's the infection or inflammation of the liver. Okay. That's true. I'm asking if I'm saying something, there is a word called hepatocyte. What does that word means? What is a hepatocyte? What does the word cyto means? Cytoplasm, cytokinesis. Disease. Cyto means cell. Cell, cell. The word cyto means cell and the word hepat means liver. So hepatocyte means liver cells. The cells of the liver are called hepatocytes. The cells of the heart are called cardiocytes. The cells of the kidney are called what is the word used for kidneys? 
renal renal is for kidney and if i say renalitis what does it means renalitis renal inflammation exactly the inflammation of the kidney if i say arthritis Then, this you must have heard arthritis ar arthro arthro Arth arthropoda arthro what does the word arthro and arthropoda means poda means appendages arthro means joints so insects have jointed appendages they are mm. called arthropoda all insects come in the come under arthropoda right yes similarly arthritis means inflammation of the joints so in old age you will see that older people have pain in their joints in the knee in the elbow yes that's called arthritis so hepatitis b it's a sexually transmitted disease it's a viral it happens due to it's a viral infection and the virus that causes it is called hbv hepatitis b virus okay yes next any other std that you are know of aids aids very good what is the full form of aids any idea sir i have written an yes. acquired immune deficiency syndrome yes it's acquired immuno deficiency syndrome okay now it's acquired which means it's not genetic yes. immuno deficiency it makes the immune system deficient and it's a syndrome because in this any there are multiple things that can happen so when if a person is suffering from aids that person might develop pneumonia in the lungs might develop other kind of skin infections other organ infections because the immune system is compromised and it is caused again it is caused by virus and the virus which causes it HIV. is called hiv what is the full form of hiv human human immuno deficiency immuno. virus h i v human immuno deficiency virus aids acquired immuno deficiency syndrome will you remember this yes yeah and aids is spread through sexual intercourse but it can also spread through uh, infected blood right yes sir if someone is infected so, then uh, he or she gives the blood as a donor so yeah it can infect the person or maybe a contact of blood uh, through like uh, two persons yeah. yes so you are right that's why everyone who is suffering from aids is actually treated is mistreated or treated very badly in our society we look down upon that person we think that you know that person might the only thing he might be because we know it's a sexually transmitted diseases so we put a label on that person that this person must have got it through uh, unprotected uh, or illegal sexual activity but that's not true all the time that person can also may happen to have got it from just a infected blood transfusion right or in case of drug addicts who use who share the needles again through that needle you can get hiv if a person is infected it can also be spread through tattoo artists so tattoo artists if they do not change the nib of that tattooing machine which is basically like a needle right so if you do not change that needle and if you use the same needle for multiple people the chances of spreading diseases like aids is more because aids also spread through blood so right down aids can spread through aids can spread through semen sexual body fluid in females and blood and it does not spread through
स्वेट सलाइवा और टीयर्स दीज आर ऑल्सो बॉडी फ्लूड राइट बट इट डज नॉट स्प्रेड थ्रू दीज सो इफ वी शुड नॉट ट्रीट एच आई वी पेशेंट लाइक we cannot touch that patient we can touch that patient right we cannot touch a open wound or you know things like that but we can touch the sweat we can handshake we can you know be just normal with that person so that is what comes with education about sexually transmitted diseases aids is clear and you can also yes. quote aids as an example to say that all stds are not rtis okay yes. anything else what are the other diseases there is something called genital herpes no herpes right like rashes uh, rashes uh, are formed in the part of the genital area yeah yes so it, that's called genital herpes herpes can also be spread to other regions of the body but genital herpes what what causes herpes you know uh no so it's a virus okay you have to just remember what is the cause so a virus causes herpes all the three we have studied till now are viral so this virus is called uh, hsv hsv herpes simplex virus the name of the agent is not in ncert but is asked in entrances and in this you are right that uh, you will see that there are sores around the genitalia uh, source means uh, what do you, what is the other good word for source mm. they are filled with pus they they can cause pain or they can also be uh, carrying pus it's like pox you know more than rashes and like so uh, like pimples which are very yeah. painful yeah like that, acne yes so this is caused by a virus there is something called gonorrhea you know gonorrhea uh i have heard of it no i don't i don't know gonorrhea is also a sexually transmitted disease so write down gonorrhea g o n o r r h e a and gonorrhea is caused by bacteria so it's a bacterial infection and the name of the bacteria is same neisseria gonorrhea neisseria so this bacteria causes gonorrhea and in this also uh, it causes it infects the so this is a gonorrhea is a rti it is a reproductive tract infection right down it is a rti it it infects it infects the mucous membrane of the reproductive tract right down means there will be itching yeah? yeah there will be itching rashes and there will be you know um, sores so it infects the mucous membranes of Sir, reproductive tract like heard like eyes also have gonorrhea sometimes <laughs> is that also has a mucous membrane it gets it can spread to other mucous membranes but if okay. it does not spread it can stay in the uh, reproductive tract then also it does the same thing it infects the mucous membrane and causes uh, infection there so if you talk about females in females it affects the cervix uterus vagina fallopian tube because all of it has a mucous membrane correct yes yeah and also urethra in in males if you talk about it affects the urethra it does not affects testes and ovaries okay but it affects urethra in males and in females both and cervix uterus vagina fallopian tube in females 
Okay, gonorrhea, and then there are syphilis. Syphilis, yes, it's called syphilis. L I S. So write down. Syphilis is caused by. It's another bacteria, bacterial disease, just like gonorrhea. Syphilis and herpes have similar kind of uh, symptoms, but syphilis is bacterial and herpes is viral. Okay. Yes. And the bacteria's name is Treponema pallidum. Uh, so, so it is treatable, yeah. Yes, it can be treated by antibiotics if detected at early stage. So, many STDs are. Uh, can be treated if detected at early stage, but many cannot be treated, like which are not just a reproductive tract infection and which are not caused by virus, sorry, in bacteria, but are caused by virus, but it affects other organs. For example, you know that HIV, we have no cure for HIV, right? Or hepatitis so, B. There is no cure means like there cannot be a cure in the future like that? In future, we can never say something cannot be in future. No. But till now, we have not been able to find a cure for this. Okay? okay. Syphilis. And then, anything else? There is something called uh, genital warts. Have you heard of it? Yes, sir. I have genital seen warts. Big pictures uh, like in the class, uh, sir. Like just showing the picture. Who showed you the picture for genital warts? Uh, I teach biology. And okay, I'll not show you the pictures for genital warts. Don't worry. You will see a lot of it if you go into medical college. So you just have to know right now that genital warts is called by virus. Okay, and that virus is called HPV. Ah, uh, human papilloma. Yes, right. Human papilloma virus. Okay. A very, very uh, infectious virus and it's sexually transmitted infection. And this is also a RTI because it affects the genitals, right? Yes. You have already shown the pictures then you know that it is an RTI. Okay, so I think, uh, mm, anything else? Yes, there's one more thing which is asked. Uh, it's called uh, chlamydiasis. Yes, is it chlamydiasis? Yes. Yes. So chlamydiasis is caused by chlamydia. Chlamydia. Okay. And what is chlamydia? We have read about it. Remember chapter 4, uh, sorry, 11th class, Bacteria? animal kingdom. Hmm? Chlamydia. What do you say? It's a bacteria? Yes, it's a bacteria. It's a bacterial disorder. The full name is chlamydia trachomatis, but you just have to remember chlamydia. That's enough. Okay, so chlamydiasis is one and then one more which is not asked much, but it's called um, trichomoniasis. We are doing it, just not let's leave it. Trichomoniasis. Do you remember this name, trichomoniasis? Like, uh, it is like uh, translated through parasites. It is caused by, yes, it's, it's, a, it's the only sexually, not only, but the one, only which you are studying. It's a sexually transmitted infection. Infection. And in this, there is a parasite, which is an endoparasite known as, do you know the name? Uh, no. It's called... Trichomoniasis vaginalis. The name 
comes from there. Yeah, foul uh, smell is something like that. Uh, yeah, there is foul smell. Yeah, more affects, seen in the men's. Yeah. It, it has a very foul smell and it actually affects the reproductive tract. So it's a RTI, it's a reproductive tract infection and starts killing the cells. And because the cells are dying, degrading, lots of pus is formed. There is very foul smell. So right on. It is caused by parasite, endoparasite. Just trico. Trichomoniasis vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas you have read in class 11. That's why I was asking if you remember it. Okay. Yes. It is a protozoa. It is not a bacteria. Remember the kingdom protozoa? Porifera. Yes. Sorry. Right? Protozoans. Yes. Malaria is also caused by a protozoa. Remember? Plasmodium. That's also a protozoa. Similarly, this trichomonas vaginalis is also a protozoa. I think we have covered all. There's yes. Anything else? Can you remember of? Herpes warts, chlamydiasis, trichomonas, so syphilis, gonorrhea. Uh, it could be fungi like uh, same thing only, but foul, foul smell comes. But uh, yes, so see fungal right? infections. Uh, mostly they are through spores, right? So they yes. come. They happen in um, area like uh, the genit humid genitalia. Areas. Yes, humid areas or areas which are not cleaned properly. But uh, that's all. So these are the sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. Now, yes. tell me one thing which can be asked in your boards is symptoms. can we can we avoid more than symptoms? How can we avoid? How uh, to avoid or prevent STDs if we cannot treat it? We cannot treat all, right? Only few can be treated. Yes. And those also, those also when they are uh, detected at early stages, they can be treated easily so how to avoid what do you think using utis uh, no. utis will never pre no, no. Pre prevent there's only one thing using the the only barrier method like, which uh, condoms uh, and yeah, femidoms during yes. condoms yeah. and femidoms are only barrier methods that prevents stds Okay. Yes. No other method prevents STDs at all. Like then, second method, you only do like uh, if we at early stage we can't uh, like concern any doc any good qualified doctor, then we can prevent it. Yeah. So that is like we can yes we cannot prevent it, but we can cure it if the diagnosis is very early, yes. the infection is very early. So the number of those bacteria or viruses or protozoa will be very less in the body. If we detect at that early stage, we can get rid of it through treatments, right? Or yes. you can just uh, also do avoid sexual intercourse with multiple partners because more the body fluids will get exchanged between humans, more are the chances of viruses getting mutated or getting transferred, right? Yes. And third is what you said, early detection, early diagnostics can be helpful to treat the infection. But this does not work in the case of non-curable STDs. Okay? Yes. Okay. Cool. So now coming to the last part of this chapter, which is infertility. What is infertility, Zed? Like it is uh, if someone is unable to produce child. Uh, and how is it different? So there are two words. One is infertility. Mm -hmm. 
देर इज अनदर वर्ड नोन एज स्टेराइल और स्टेरिलिटी वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इनफर्टाइल ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड अटेराइल ऑर्गेनिज्म और बोथ आर सेम Both are not same, but kind of same. Both are not same, but kind of same. What is it? Uh, I I know the meaning of uh, infertility, which is sterile. I have heard, it. so I don't know. Okay, the so sterile. Uh, I'll tell you. In both, they cannot produce offspring, right? Sterile yeah. we mostly use with those organisms where by birth they were not, they do not have the capability at all. For example, a hybrid. cross species for example if you cross breed a uh, donkey with a horse you get a mule right yes so mule is by birth sterile it never had the ability to reproduce infertile are those organisms which could reproduce which can reproduce but because of some disorder disease or any problem they are not able to reproduce or produce offsprings so they are infertile they can become fertile you know yes where there is no chances of reversibility it's called sterile for example the permanent birth control methods are called methods of sterilization remember yes there we make the human sterile not infertile it can never produce from that point onwards yes and is it clear we understand the difference between the yeah. two yeah so write down sterile sorry infertile write down an organism which is unable to produce offsprings organism or human unable to produce offsprings even even through even through unprotected sexual intercourse unprotected sexual intercourse due to any disorder disease or malfunctioning of the organs or the system so that's called infertility is it clear yes now what could be the reasons for infertility uh, psychological physical yes uh, so first is physical physical is very obvious right first reason could be physical that you have physical issues in the structure the organs right yes so physical could be defect in organs right then it could be congenital what do we mean by congenital by birth defect so anything which is congenital is by birth for example congenital heart diseases so they are by birth okay yes so congenital and so in congenital be, heart disease the heart is present outside here yeah. that is one type of congenital heart disorder where the heart is present outside the chest cavity right yes sir and in that cases you have to like you know it's very difficult for the patient to survive so you have to surgically close that opening put the heart inside like this yes. and uh, or due to diseases which we discussed above STDs are one example. STDs can cause infertility, right? Yes. Or misuse of drug.
drug misuse can cause infertility and what else can cause infertility means a lot of alcohol smoking all these things affect the sperm count and it could be immunological and psychological yes psychological if the person is going through some psychological disorders or diseases then also the person will not be able to reproduce properly so these are all the reasons you understand which can cause yes. infertility now what are the what can we do for people who are infertile so write down infertile couples infertile couples can can be provided with can be provided with assisted reproductive techniques any idea what are these yes sir like yes, uh, like test In, baby uh, yes. like that things in short it is called art okay art yes. assisted reproductive techniques or technologies and these are of various types depending on where the problem lies now the problem can also be with the female or the problem can also be with the male right yes so first of all first one is uh, you are correct which is called ivf ivf is in vitro fertilization okay yes it is very famous with the common name which is test tube baby this name is also a misnomer because the baby is not developing in test tube right it gives a feel like the baby is coming out of a test tube or is developed in a test tube but that's not true it's just fertilization that happens outside so write down fertilize in ivf fertilization happens outside the body in in lab conditions in lab conditions that are similar that are similar to the condition of female body so they create the same kind of environment in a petri dish or a test tube where same kind of body fluids are there and in that fluid you put a ovum and a sperm okay and allow them to fertilize allow the sperm to fertilize the ovum do you understand yes that is ivf so ivf will only ensure what do you think when do we need to do ivf when when is the need to do ivf so in uh, when the sperm is not itself fertilizing with the ovum then you can yes. use this method so in cases of male so ivf is mostly done in cases where males are not able to produce enough number of sperms or they are not able to produce healthy viable sperms okay you understand yes or uh, the sperms are uh, as i said very less in number so they are not able to fertilize so we take that sperm out and we fertilize it in vitro so there are three words in vitro in vivo in silico 
you know the difference between the three in silico i don't know in in vivo you know right in vivo is inside yes. the living system in vitro is outside the living system in a uh, artificial environment in a test tube beaker petri plate etc in silico yes. is within the within computer digitally in silico uh -huh. simulations so you know that games this 3d virtual games are in silico simulations so whatever you are doing you are doing in silico virtual world or so through life digitally can huh? life no. can be produced life can be produced there life cannot be produced there but artificial no, yeah. intelligence artificial. can be produced in silico or softwares programs like siri alexa they are also produced in silico yes. right yeah okay but ivf has always been followed so just doing ivf is not enough right after doing ivf you have to transfer that fertilized embryo right so right yes. down it is followed by followed by embryo transfer is it here it is et embryo transfer so there are of different types depending on what stage it is at okay so first is called first kind of embryo transfer can be zift it stands for zygote intra fallopian transfer okay zift yes so it tells that we are transferring at the stage of a zygote so if we are transferring as a zygote we cannot transfer it in the uterus right we have to transfer a zygote in the fallopian tube because zygote travels from the fallopian tube into the uterus it takes 4 5 days and in the meanwhile it develops into a blastocyst right yes and then that blastocyst stage gets implanted so blastocyst is a multicellular embryo already zygote is a unicellular diploid cell so if just after fertilization you want to transfer it you have to do zift okay so okay. the second kind of transfer is iut iut is uh, intra uterine uh, transfer transfer yes now it is intra uterine which means in the uterus so if it is in the uterus you know that it has to be more than eight cell stage right so right now yes, yes. iut is done when it is more than eight cell stage then you can put it in the uterus is it clear zift yes. is clear iut is clear yes sir okay um there is one more thing which is different kind of transfer it is not done after ivf but it is uh, it does not need ivf it can be done separately and it is called gift and it it is like a gift it is what the word says so okay. gift is yes tell me what is gift uh it's like uh, uh, uh ovum is collected from the donor and uh, and uh, in the fallopian tube of another uh, and it is put into another female's uh, reproductive tract then yes can, uh, uh, then that female but, is is uh, just told to normally it. yes normally undergo sexual reproduction yes. sexual intercourse so basically this is done for females okay uh, actually this uh, this question came in exam i wrote like uh, uh, gift is used when the uh, when the female is not able to conceive the pregnancy so that the people of higher uh, people higher another womb of the female human uh, they plant no, their no. embryo in its but i got marks <laughs> you got marks yes yes that's what that's what i'm telling you are lucky that's called surrogacy that's called yes, a surrogate, surrogate mother so surrogacy is where you hire a womb 
or the the baby of a different woman is growing in the womb of a different woman actually that's called a sansa in one page that's <laughs> the quantity <laughs> They thought इतना लिखा है तो सही लिखा होगा. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyways, but don't make the mistake in entrance. Okay. Entrance yes. is going to uh, not give you marks. So gift is let's first write down. It's called gamete. Intra. Fallopian transfer. Okay. Now let's read it. What what is the correct version? So in this, a female who is not able to produce ovum or release ovum, okay. So she is not able to produce or release ovum in the fallopian tube, or the fallopian tube is blocked before, like after the ampulla isthmus junction. So whenever a ovum enters, the infundibulum is blocked and it cannot go further. So in that cases, or in yeah, or if she is so three cases, she is not producing ovum at all. she is not releasing ovum or the infundibulum is blocked so in that cases we can take ovum from a donor mother okay any other woman and just place that ovum near the ampulla isthmus junction of the fallopian tube and then you tell the female to just you know undergo normal sexual intercourse the sperms from the male will come so in this case male has to be normal right so yes. sperms has to will come and fertilize the ovum at the right place in the fallopian tube and then everything after that ha will happen normally so the female is actually able to conceive pregnancy unlike you wrote okay yes she is not able to release or produce ovum so write down it is the transfer of an ovum transfer of an ovum from a donor woman from a donor and if it is ovum it has to be woman don't write woman into the fallopian tube of another woman into the fallopian tube of another woman Okay, who cannot produce? Uh, so, 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 first I yes. was going to write like in the exam, like uh, when the female is not able to produce excessive amount of uh, like uh, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, that that excessive I was going to write. Excessive amount. Female yes. produces only one. One. Th there is no concept of amount in female. Yeah. Remember, yeah. Who Genesis? the mm. the concept of amount or quantity or number comes in males because they have to produce 30 300 million sperms for ejaculation yes so, so write down who in this one who cannot produce ovum but but can provide so this is where your answer was wrong but can provide suitable environment for fertilization and pregnancy okay yes but can provide suitable environment for fertilization and pregnancy the one which you are talking about is surrogacy then there is another thing just like an ivf it is called a uh, icsi you know what is this it's called intra cytoplasmic sperm injection sperm so injection in this like uh, the inside the ovum the sperm is in injected uh, in uh, something like uh, there are two cases first like uh, in inside the uh, fallopian tube itself and second case they take the ovum and they uh, do it in the laboratory 
Yes. It's mostly done in the laboratory because it's very, very complicated to do it right inside the fallopian tube. Yes. So you have to first penetrate the body, then penetrate the fallopian tube. Then inside that, you have to penetrate the ovum, which is not like, I don't think it's done. Yes. So what happens is there is a big needle like this, which mm, due to suction, due to suction, holds the ovum in place. Okay. Yes. So this glass is just holding the ovum is in place with some pressure, some suction pressure is there in this needle. And then there's a very fine micro needle. Okay. Which is poked inside and then a sperm is released. Okay. Yes. So this is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So right on. It is a procedure to form an embryo in the laboratory. It is a procedure to form an embryo in the laboratory where the sperm is directly injected into the ovum. Where the sperm is directly injected into the ovum. Okay. okay. This is done in cases where the male is like uh, not able to produce healthy sperms, which can, you know, go through all that vagina, uh, vaginal tract and go through all that female tract and reach the ovum and fertilize. So even if you keep the sperm in the vicinity of ovum, it is not able to fertilize. So IVF is also not working. So a better way is directly put the sperm inside. All, all what we need to fuse is two nucleus together, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fourth one is called <clears throat> artificial insemination. What is this? Artificial. Like, uh, if uh, if the male is not able to produce uh, an excessive amount of uh, sperms, then yes. uh, these uh, then we can take artificially the sperms from the husband or male. Then we can yes, so insert that uh, sperms in the female. Yes. Uterus. So write down. Write down. In case of. In case of. Low sperm count. In case of low sperm count or inability of the male partner to, to inseminate the female partner, either due to low sperm count or the inability of the male partner, which is also known as erectile dysfunction. You know, I told you about this erectile tissues are there yes. in the penis. So in these cases, the, the sperm cannot be effectively placed in the female tract. So what they do is they collect the sperm from the male donor in multiple ejaculations and then inseminate the female artificially. Then the sperm are enough in count and then they go and fertilize and normal thing happen. Okay. So an in artificial insemination also, no need of IVF is there. Okay. Yes. Okay, so write down in this, the semen is collected. The semen is collected from the male, from the male, and is artificially introduced, artificially introduced into the vagina. So it can either be introduced into vagina, in which case it is called uh, IVI, intra-vaginal insemination. If you have enough sperms and you think that the sperms are healthy, then put it in vagina like normally the male should male could have done, right? 
if you want mm. to be double sure then you can also introduce it into the uterus directly so you save half of the journey right yes so if you introduce into uterus then it is called i u i intra uterine insemination is it clear yes insemination is of two types i think we have covered everything icsi uh, insemination gif zif iut ivf yes so this is all okay here yes. we end this chapter please go through everything that we have written today okay and uh, ask me if you have any doubts if you have no doubts then i will let's solve some previous years question before going to before starting genetics okay yes. so i'll give you let's take two two three minutes of break i'll just get water for myself in the meanwhile you check your notes of this chapter and then i'll start with some questions okay yes okay. i'll be back in couple of minutes one minute two minutes okay zaid just yes. be there Okay, you there, Zaid? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so written everything. Shall I stop yes. sharing this? Okay. And I will share with you some previous years question from this chapter. 
can you see the screen yes yes so these are some previous years questions that has been asked um so let's start with some important ones can you see question number 6 yes please read question number 6 and tell me what do you think is the answer embryo with this was asked 16. in 2016 Yes. Embryo with more than sixteen blastoma is formed due to in vitro or uh, due to in vitro fertilization is transferred into. More than sixteen blastoma. So... Yeah. Where will you transfer that embryo? C is not the option. Fallopian tube. So which? Uh, C and D is not the option. Uterus. Okay. I think. What are blastomeres? Blastomeres is the stage uh, where that is blastocyst. Blastocyst. Okay. Blastomeres are individual cells mm. in an embryo. Yeah, yeah which, individual cells in an embryo which, which are developed uh, through cleavage. Cleavage of. When it is a four-celled embryo, we say that that embryo has four blastomeres. Four blastomeres. So sixteen blastomeres means sixteen celled embryo. This is just to confuse you. Yeah. So after eight onwards, we have to put it in uterus. Yeah. So after sixteen onwards, where will you put it? Uh, uterus. Fallopian. Uh, uterus. No, uterus. Okay. Anything after eight has to be put mm -hmm. in uterus because in uterus it will be embedded, right? Yes. Yes. In fallopian tube, it should be the early embryo, like early zygote, uh, one cell, two cell. Four cell can be placed in the fallopian tube. Oops. Okay, so the answer is uterus. Now tell me the answer for question number two asked in two thousand and seventeen. Question number two: The function of copper ions in the copper releasing iodides uh, they uh, they inhibit gametogenesis. Uh, they make the uterus uh, unstable for. Uh, unsuitable for implantation. Uh, they inhibit ovulation. Uh, they suppress sperm uh, motility and fertilization capability of sperm. Uh, ability of ovulation. What do copper ion? Um, what do copper releasing iodides do? Yes. Uh, I think option number D. But I am checking for other options. Yes. Please be sure and then tell me. Yes. Sir, I think B. B. Ah, uh, D, D, D. Last. D. Time. Yeah. Yes, D is the correct option. Okay. The other options are not correct because ovulation is inhibit inhibited by hormone releasing iodides. Yes. Okay, and hormone release releasing iodides also make the uterus unsuitable for implantation. So these two are done by hormone releasing iodides. They inhibit gametogenesis. No IUD does. No uh, IUD does that. You cannot inhibit gametogenesis, right? Yes. You can inhibit ovulation, like the release of that gamete. Correct. True. Question number three. In Quickly. In case of couple where the male is having a very low sperm count, uh, okay, which technique will be suitable for the fertilization? Uh, option number C. Think again. Okay. The male is having very low sperm count. Go option by option and think, which one can you do? Uh, so B, artificial insemination, is an option. Yeah. B, not C. Yeah, B. No. Sperm injection. No. Yeah, you can do a sperm injection. No. Take yeah, one sperm, it inject it. Cytoplasmic sperm. Uh, like A and B, uh, uh, A and C are kind of uh, same. So I will take B. A is gift. Gamete intracytoplasmic. Sorry, gamete. 
intracytoplasmic fallopian transfer yes it's like a and c you can do b and c both you know so yes. this question i figured out that in 2017 when it was asked there are two right answers b and c intracytoplasmic mm -hmm. sperm injection is actually done in case in cases where there is very very low sperm count when artificial insemination will also not work or artificial insemination can also be done when there is low sperm count so b and c both are true so whoever has done both b and c both. is given the full marks yes. okay so these kind of questions either get cancelled or everyone who has attempted gets marked but you know that both are possible yes yes sir. very good now please read question number eight and read it carefully okay i want the right answer so what is down syndrome down Dose. syndrome yeah, down. down syndrome is a chromosomal in the next chapter yeah yes but it is uh, a chromosomal yeah, disorder yeah. yeah they're just you just have to know that it is a chromosomal disorder okay you can solve it now tell in me context even if of you... mu synthesis which of the following statements uh, statement in this it can be used for detection of down syndrome incorrect in remember incorrect. that incorrect. it is asking you the incorrect statement yes okay it can be used for detection of uh, cleft plate i don't know this oh. it is used uh, usually done when a woman is between 14 to 16 week pregnant it is used for uh, Perinatal sex determination. Perinatal sex determination. I think option number D, uh, which is incorrect. Sorry. Yes. So D is not the option. D is correct. D is correct. Yeah. D is correct. A is also correct because yes. chromosomal disorders can be figured out through amniocentesis. Ah, uh, sir, I don't know what is B. So. What is you will go for B. Yeah. Cleft palate is where the the upper lip. is not properly formed at the time of birth there is a like it is is actually furrow it has a furrow so the upper lip is like this it it comes in mutation it is it it does not it is a, a developmental disorder development oh, okay and you are right b will be the right answer because it cannot be figured out through amniocentesis Okay. Okay. Yes. So you have to read the questions carefully. Incorrect. पूछा है कि इन कि correct पूछा है, right? Yes. Question four. It's just a factual question. If you know it, you know it. Tell me quick. Mm, okay. Which of the following is a homoeritizing IOD? So multi root P seventy five is not copper. Seven is not uh, L N G twenty. Okay. Lipid loop. Which is hormone releasing? So I think option number A. Yeah. Yes, hormone LNG twenty and progestin salt. Yeah, yeah. These two are hormone releasing. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Then uh, uh, others are easy. You will be able to do it. I am just focusing on some interesting ones. Yes, read question number twenty. The STV baby program employs uh, employs which or which one of the following techniques: intracytoplasmic sperm injection, intrauterine uh, insemination, gamete in the fallopian transfer, gamete uh, zygote in the. Uh, sir, option number D. Yes. Yeah. So you have to do test tube baby. They are not, they are just using the word test tube baby, but you have to understand test tube baby is IVF. and after ivf we have to transfer either the zygote or the embryo so embryo is not an option zygote intra fallopian transfer is so that will be the right answer okay no very good you are getting fast and you are getting correct um uh, one more is also yes write down question number 24 read Uh, question number two fertilization is uh, is a technique that involves transfer mm -hmm. of which one of the following into the fallopian tube 
embryo only up to okay in vitro embryo only up to eight cell stage uh, okay either zygote or early embryo up to eight uh, embryo at 32 cell stage zygote on so d is not the option c is not the option uh, either zygote or early embryo up to eight either zygote so option number b yes correct yeah. either zygote or an early embryo up to eight cell stage both can be yes. placed in the fallopian tube yes most of the times you see just the embryo only up to eight cell stage select it and it is wrong yes very good okay um Question number 34. What is the work of progesterone which uh, is present in oral contraceptive pills to inhibit the ovulation to check oogenesis, to check either of sperm into cervix, to make them inactive, to check sexual behavior? Uh, inhibit ovulation, yeah? Yeah, okay. inhibit ovulation. Yes. yes, right. So progesterone and estrogen, they do not allow ovulation to happens great very good now we are going towards the end some more interesting ones question number 41 the last which one which of the following statement is correct with reference to the tube day fertilization of uh, the egg is affected outside the body the fertilized egg is then placed in the womb of the mother where the gestation is completed. It is correct. Okay. Fertilization of the egg is affected in the female genital tract. It is then taken out and grown in the large. No, no, B is not correct. B is not correct. The pre uh, maturely born uh, baby is re uh, rarely. Uh, fertilization of the egg and drone of the embryo are affected in a large way. Uh, sir, option number A. Yes, correct. It's option number A. Perfect. Very good. So you are getting good with it. So these were the most interesting ones. And others are easy. You will be able to do it. Zed, okay. Yes. So these were the previous year's exact questions uh, from the chapter Reproductive Health. So now let me share the screen with you again for that. Just one moment. So today I'll be just telling you the basics of genetics. We'll start with basics of genetics because we have uh, half an hour. We started half an hour late. So we'll talk about some basic fundamentals and uh, we'll finish the class. Okay. So at least we will come to genetics today. So let me just do one thing. Let me make another page to it. Just give me one moment, okay? Seth? Chapter five. Okay. Um, can you see the screen that I'm sharing? Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. So let's start with chapter five. It has been already started in your school. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, finished. Finished? Okay, then good. So we'll be able to discuss faster and we'll be able to move forward. Okay. So chapter five basically talks about we are now uh, the first unit. This is where the next unit starts. The uh, seventh unit of your syllabus starts. The sixth unit, which is the first unit of 12th class was about reproduction. Okay. 
whatever we studied yes, in reproduction tells us about how organisms produce offsprings right how they produce the next generation yes now this unit is about when we produced next generations how are gen genes and factors characteristics passed on to the next generation okay so it is associated with the last unit but it is about the genetics now you already know about uh, mendel right yes. so you know about gregor johan mendel who was mendel tell me z you are not audible to me you are mute are you there z am i audible to you uh yes sir. you are audible yes okay so you know who was mendel he is known as father of genetics okay and what did mendel do any idea so mendel used pea plant as a model system right to study Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me okay, now? Sir. Yeah. Yeah. There was some issue, I think. So I was telling you. Uh, do you know Gregor Johann Mendel? So Mendel is known yes. as father of genetics. Father of genetics. And he used pea plant as a model system to study inheritance. Yes. You know, inheritance of characters or traits. Okay. Now. pea plant you know the scientific name of pea plant it's called pisum uh, sativum pisum sativum okay now there is a very common question let's just do this also when we are discussing pea question is why did mendel use pea plant for his experiment why pea plant so it is used because it have only 3 months uh, life cycle in yes. which uh, it grows dies in so one thing is short life cycle which you said very good so if it has short life cycle it helps us how does it helps us to study in a brief it helps to study more generation more generation yes yes more generations in short in short period of time if he would have chosen a mango tree he would have not been able to finish yeah. the study because it has a very long life cycle so one is short life cycle correct what what is the other benefit for choosing pea plant uh it is recently one that i don't when whenever you are so just think logically see in biology if you ever come to a point where you are not remembering the answer just think logically pea plant why did he chose pea plant to study inheritance right yeah. now to, if you want to study certain inheritance of a trait what how a character will pass on to the next generation you need next generation yes yes first thing you need so short life cycle so that you can study multiple generations that thing is sorted problem solved 
you also need traits right many different yes. contrasting traits so pea plant had many traits which had many characters which had contrasting traits for example for height it had two contrasting traits a tall height and a dwarf, dwarf height for seed color again it had two contrasting con contrasting traits uh, green and yellow for pod color yes. green and yellow for flower color purple or white so there were very different traits for many characters which you could study okay so write down yes second reason was multiple characters multiple characters with contrasting with contrasting traits that could be studied that could be studied in next generation okay yes what else so we have traits we have a shorter life span what do we what else do we need mm, we need it next was, generation uh, and a lot of need, progenies yeah, we need we need a lot of progenies right so it can produce more seed multiple seeds at a time yes uh, hundreds of seeds right down pea plant produces pea, pea plant produces a large number of seeds what are seeds basically the offsprings right because you sow the seed and the new plant will come so it produces a large number of seeds hence large number of offsprings and you were also it's saying easy something to handle or maintain uh, easily grown like yes easy to handle but there are many other plants which are easy to handle but yeah. easy to handle in context of pollination okay, okay. so both both self pollination and cross pollination is possible and easily and easily main, maintained whatever you want to do you can do that understand yes so for these four reasons mendel chose the pea plant as a model system to study genetics so one more like it is a bisexual flower first of all that's it. yes right model system to study genetics you remember it is bisexual and it it, it is p it is also cleistogamous chapter 2 I told you about cleistogamous flowers. Ah uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Chasmogamous uh, okay. flowers. Yeah, cleistogamous. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, chasmogamous. Cleistogamous. Chasmogamous. Cleistogamous are the uh, plants which, uh, which do uh, like self pollination, but their uh, petals. Yeah, petals don't open. I think. Yes. Yeah. So it is a bisexual. Flower. You're right, and also it's cleistogamous. Right? Yes. Very good. So these are the reasons for which he used pea plant. Write down. let me know when you are done so finished finished okay good now another question which has been asked in exams is oh what did i use i don't how many varieties of plant did mental used 
how many varieties so you know he used 14 varieties because because he used seven characters and each character had two contrasting traits so total how many different type of plants 14 14 varieties okay so right on mendel used 14 varieties of pea plant to study genetics and what were the characters used uh, uh seed shape uh, seed color flower color then yes so pot shape pot color flower position yes so let's write height. character and then write the so every character has two traits right one was a mm, dominant yeah. trait and one is recessive yes so we'll figure out what is dominant and recessive later but dominant trait and recessive trait so the first character was let's say what did you say height plant uh, height okay. so what is the dominant character in plant height dominant trait tall yes of this character the dominant trait is tall and the recessive trait is dwarf right yes let's go to the second one what what is the second uh, seed shape seed shape what is the dominant trait of the seed shape round yes and recessive wrinkled wrinkled then uh, seed color Yes, seed color. Okay, tell me the dominant uh, trait. Yellow. Yellow, very good. Uh, and green. Recessive is green. Green. Have you ever seen a uh, peas which come to your house? Yeah. You must have. What is the color of the seeds? They are actually green. Yes. So do you understand that basically we always breed the recessive trait? Yes. because everyone likes the green one because they are little, uh, very sweet the yellow ones are not yes. that sweeter like they are not that soft and sweet yellow ones are also used they yes. are called not peas but they are called chickpeas um, yeah chickpeas yeah they are yellowish they are used in uh, hmm. what should i say um in uh, pani puri brand haldiram yeah Uh, yeah yes 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 in pani puri also it's the not the green ones it's the yellow ones yeah, yeah. you know what is pani puri right yes 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 i have gol gol gappa yeah gol gappa yeah so the, that is which means that it is the recessive trait that has been bred by the farmers four what is the fourth uh, character flower color okay let's go with flower color tell me the dominant no, violet violet and recessive and white. is white yeah perfect and the fifth uh pod shape okay pod is inside which the seeds are present yes yes you know we all so as we... kids have had the duty to remove seeds from the pods uh, yeah. in house yeah what is the pod shape dominant uh, pod shape full full uh, or it is also straight or something like that no we can say um, full or full inflated inflate which means it looks something like this so it is a full pod like this yes. and seeds are present inside or and the it, other uh, one is constricted constricted hmm. and it looks like if there are seeds so the pod takes the shape of seeds yes So it also has seeds but it looks constricted okay yes which one comes to your house uh both sometimes yeah it depends mostly this one right yeah mostly this most. one is preferred yes okay tell me the sixth character uh pod color okay pod color what is the dominant color green yes can do you see that when it comes to pod color green is dominant but when it comes to seed color yellow is dominant yes yes mm -hmm. and yellow hair is 
Precious. Precious. And what was the last character? Uh, flower position. Okay. Flower position. And what are the uh, dominant position? Axial. Okay. You understand what is axial? Yes, sir. A single stem is there, but uh, from that stem, uh, the flowers are approaching. Now. Yes, so axial is that it does not, uh, so flowers are always coming towards the lateral sides and yes. this keeps growing. So this is axial. Understand? Yes. Whereas the domain, uh, recessive one is? Uh, terminal. Terminal. Terminal is? This is the like plant. From the stem. Yeah. So it will be like this and then it will also be there. Okay. Yes. So the stem growth stops. Okay. Yes. So axial flower position leads to tall plant. That's why tall and axial both are dominant characters. Because if flowers are coming on the side, the stem will keep moving up, right? Keep growing. You yes. understand? But if flowers just come at the top and stop the uh, growth. So in this, there is this last one and there is a flower. So now the stem cannot go up, right? This can still yes. continue to go up, but this cannot. So terminal yes. leads to a dwarf plant. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So these are the seven characteristics and also the, um, what do we say, 14 varieties that Mendel used. Okay. Yes. Now using studying genetics, we next have to study, which I will just brief you about, but we'll start it in the next class. It is called Mendel's law of inheritance. So Mendel's work basically gave, give rise to three laws. Do you know the three laws? The first one is called law of dominance. Yes. Okay. Yes. Law of dominance is not a universally accepted yes. law. It has exceptions. It is not true all the time. And people found these exceptions after Mendel has given, like he's gone and the law was there. So exceptions are incomplete dominance. So I'm just giving you outlook for what we will start in the next class and co-dominance. This we will do first. Okay. Oops. In the second law given by Mendel was law of segregation. Yes. Law of segregation or it is also known as law of purity of gametes. We will, we will understand all these law in the next class, okay? Because it will take time, but I'm just telling you. This is a universal law. It has no exceptions. Okay? Yes. We will understand why it has no exceptions. Then the third one is called? Law of independence. Yes law of independent assortment. Okay. This is also not universally accepted and it also has exceptions. And the exception is linkage of genes. Okay. Now, what yes. you have to understand here is the first and the second law, these two law are based on single gene inheritance or one gene inheritance. And to study these two laws, we do mono hybrid cross. So write down these words because you have to go back, read it from your notes and then come in the next class prepared for the discussion. Okay. 
where is this third law is based on two gene inheritance and we study this third law through die hybrid cross okay is it clear this is studied by mono hybrid cross yes. and this is studied by di hybrid cross okay yes and also uh, one more thing you have to so i'm giving you this as a homework you have to go and read these laws and as a part of homework you also have to read uh, sorry study what is a punnett square uh, so that we have done in like uh, 9th or 10th yeah 10th yes so you have to just revise what is a punnett square yes and two more things you have to revise the genotypic ratio and phenotypic and phenotypic ratio so this will make your foundation for the next class and we will be able to proceed faster so this is your homework okay okay sir thank so you so much so let's talking. stop to today here yes you know 5 minutes early because if we'll start any law we will not be able to finish it in 5 minutes so i'll see you in the next class zed and don't miss the classes we are in genetics now so this was just the basic fundamental and from next class onwards we will go into the details okay okay sir. okay so bye bye revise thank and good night sir. see you in the next class okay, good night bye, bye. bye. bye.